everyone. Once again, Jonas here from the 40 Yard Labs team at 40Net, and I'm here with another outbreak alert. Today, we talk about Akira ransomware, a specific threat actor which caused a lot of harm across more than 250 organizations worldwide, and they made over 42 million in revenue with ransomware. This is a lot of money, and as we usually know, the more funded a specific ransomware group becomes, the more capabilities they will pick up down the road because they have more money available, more funds available to reinvest. So usually they don't just buy every single Porsche in a different color. No, they use this money to buy new CRAs, to invest in more R&D, to have more researchers available on their side for infiltrating corporate networks. Now, this specific threat actor, though, is leveraging very old vulnerabilities. They're leveraging vulnerabilities in Cisco's VPN solutions from 2020 and 2023. And when we look at these vulnerabilities, they're quite critical. One of them is over nine, has a CVS score of over nine. The other one, 7.5 out of 10. And when we look at their specific tactics, they either use these vulnerabilities or they find remote desktop computers directly connected to the internet with weak credentials. So they either brute force them or find the credentials in data breaches from other hacks in the past. And most of these accounts don't have multi-factor authentication enabled, which means it's not that difficult to log in once you have the right credentials because there's no phone or any other device involved, which provides you with a token for multi-factor authentication, which in my opinion is very key these days. Now, other than that, they used to rely on C++, but it seems like in recent days, they shifted or pivoted towards Rust, uh, the programming language. So it also shows they're staying up to date, probably for evasion techniques, more likely because some of their older tools might have been discovered, ha might have been tagged as malicious, and now they want to bypass some of the security layers. But the reason why we are talking about this specific threat actor right now is, even though we discovered them early in 2023, March and April, when we look at the current indicator of compromises, we see this threat actor being quite active these days. So this is another use case of an outbreak alert where we look at our telemetry from all around the world and see what is what is um, spiking. And we see specific hashes which are related to the malware which is being deployed on the computers. But also we see IP addresses which are being used for command and control purposes, exfiltration of information for other kind of services as well. And this is another good highlighted uh, outbreak alert that we really show you the value of having information available and acting quickly. So first of all, I highly recommend to subscribe to the 40 guard outbreak alerts because whenever we see something trending, you're the first one to be aware about it. But also we obviously provide some deeper analysis from our own research departments, from other organizations like CISA. And also, if you want to know what you can do to protect yourself against these kind of threats based on the NIST framework, protect, detect, respond, recover, and identify, we have you covered. We have different kinds of solutions in place to protect yourself. But also, if you want to know, mm, I do have these solutions in place, and there is a decent chance that I was potentially a victim from the Akira ransomware group, how can I do some threat hunting in my network? How can I detect whether they have been active, identifying if they caused any kind of action? And maybe there's an ongoing campaign right now. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And with that being said, see you next time. Bye-bye.